You positive heads out there, thanks for tuning your beautiful brainwaves into another episode of the Positive Head Podcast, where we are firmly convinced that creating success and happiness is rooted in understanding the ultimate nature of reality and the fact that as human beings, we are all immensely powerful fractals of the one and only source consciousness, which creates and animates all things. After years of exploring this awe-inspiring truth on this podcast, I'm super, super excited to announce that we are now going even deeper down the rabbit hole on the new late-night-style consciousness-elevating talk show called Optimistic, which features none other than you, the listeners. Optimistic is taped out of the epic, spaceship-esque, eight-bedroom property we call the Mystic Manor that myself and the rest of the Optimistic crew now navigate reality from in Venice Beach, California. And you are invited to come experience a Mystic Manor Immersion Week with us. During your week-long stay, you'll enjoy unique workshops, chef-prepared meals, one-on-one time coaching and consulting with me, and even co-creating magic with me as a guest on both Optimistic and an episode of the Positive Head Podcast. When I started this, my aim with these immersive retreats was to facilitate the ultimate spiritual upgrade and tune-up, so to speak, uh, for our guests while providing them with one of the most memorable experiences of their lives. And I'm happy to say that as of this recording, every guest at the end of their trip so far has told me that they have had a profound and transformational experience at the Mystic Manor and that they definitely want to come back. All that being said, we only have a limited number of spots available between now and next July. And as of this recording, about half of those spots are already filled. So if there is any part of you that is screaming, yes, I want to come, I feel like I need to be there, go now and book a slot with me to discuss how we can put our heads together and make it happen at calendly.com forward slash talk with Brandon. I know for some people, there is also that little voice in their head saying, why not? You know, I can't get off work. I can't afford it and on and on and on. But, you know, really, Henry Ford, I think, said it best. Whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. And I'm confident that where there's a will, there's a way. And I'm personally committed to doing everything in my power, including discounts and payment plans to get you here if it is something that truly feels like a huge yes for you energetically and like you're meant to be here. Once again, the link to book time to discuss with me is calendly.com forward slash talk with Brandon. That's spelled C-A-L-E-N-D-L-Y dot com forward slash talk with Brandon. All one word, of course. And uh, yeah, book in some time and look forward to seeing you soon here at the Mystic Manor. All right, all you positive heads. Welcome, welcome. It is a magical Monday here in the studio as I record. And I am happy to say I'm not alone. My friend, brother from another alien, Oren Harris, happened to be swinging through the Mystic Manor today. And I literally was about to, he was was meeting with, you're meeting with Sam. And, uh, you know, I was just about to come record. I'm like, hold on, Oren Harris is sitting in my living room. (laughs) How much time you got? Let's go host. You know, I hadn't even figured out what I was going to talk about and i'm so glad you obliged me by accepting yes yes right place right time perfect timing divine timing always yes sir and for those of you who recognize a name or don't uh oren was actually a guest uh a a while back maybe a year and a half i'm gonna guess or so ago and i just looked up the to see what episode number to let you guys know actually it's going back to september 2018 Episode 777. Yes, sir. <laughs> so that was just talk about, you know, uh, and it even says, so the, the, the title is Flow Master and Teacher Oren Harris. So being the master of flow, you would land on, on just s- la- 
landed synchronistically on episode uh, 777. Yes, yes. That's how, that's how I roll. <laughs> that's how he does it, folks. So you're in for no pressure, uh, Oren, but now you got to really like live up to live that. Live up to it, right. Episode. Exactly. <laughs> what do we talk about, man? We haven't, I mean, we literally, guys, I grabbed him five minutes ago and said, come on, let's do this. And, uh, you know, I have no idea what, what he wants to discuss, uh, but we're going to talk about something. Yeah. So one thing that's inspiring me these days is group flow states, mm. right? <clears throat> like the flow is like the holy grail. Um, and it's the thing that many people in one way or another are trying to hack into. And when I say when I say flow, often we talk about the experience of the flow. When we're in flow, we're in like the right place at the right time. Synchronicities are happening. Yep. Meaningful coincidences. There's the grace. There's more ease. You know, we're just like our next level selves right and so as a species we're still kind of early on and really understanding what that is and being able to tap into it now that gives rise though to group flow which is where my inspiration always also lies and like mm. what that means for humanity when we come together in a group flow state what it is that we can produce or create uh, in terms of whether it's art or creativity or business or even changing the world when we have a collective uh, heart collective mind that's operating with individual bodies but kind mm-hmm. of like one unified intention yep i feel like we're just at the beginning of the beginning of what is possible for us to be able to create and express and do on this planet in group flow states. So group flow states are like the future, the future now. It's so it's so funny that you say that because I literally maybe uh, maybe an hour ago hung up with someone who is going to be coming to a retreat here uh, at the Mystic Manor uh, in uh, I believe yeah end of January she's coming and it was that was part of my conversation is you know she was asking me about like what the experiences have been like and I actually do episodes with um, you know people on Fridays when they've already been here for most of their week mm-hmm. and I was explaining to her I was like yeah there's just something about the group. I mean, yeah. yes, the show is beautiful. There's so much more, ever more content out there. But when you get together, and I quoted the one of few Bible verses that I know, and I probably don't have it exactly right, but it's, you know, basically where, where one or more are gathered in my name, I'll be there. It like yes. creates this field. It's exponential. It's exponential. And so that's the, the thing that I've, has really grounded for me in, in doing these, you know, the retreats here at the Mystic Manor over the last six months is, wow, uh, there's really something special that happens when you set the intention and you create the container and you put everyone in this little you know melting pot and say okay let's see what what arises out of this you can't even plan for it all totally and i think you know one of the things that uh, i guess influences the depth and power of that it's the individual's ability to surrender to the intention and to essentially um let go of the the self, mm-hmm. you know, to be able to see the alchemy of what is possible in the group right. be, beyond just what is known. Like what is known is each individual's knowledge, their the wisdom of their experiences, their skills. These are things that are visible and known yep. and obviously contribute to a powerful team or group in whatever endeavor. <clears throat> but when you get a group of people connected in the heart and they kind of let their egos get into the passenger seat, mm-hmm. then the, the the higher selves of everyone in the group and the infinite now opens up. And I think that's what makes it exponential. And I was thinking about like one of the keys to being able to do that or another key is transparency. Mm. And the only reason we're not really transparent is it's always comes down to like judgment or fear, mm-hmm. right? And so the things that we want to Hide. Not to say that everything should be shared, like like uh, overtly or physically or outwardly, but there's this mechanism by which we hide, and it usually is uh, comes from judgment mm-hmm. or from fear, right? And separation, right? Which then creates a veil between, uh, you know, this illusionary veil of separation, and it kind of puts us at different levels of consciousness. Fun fun way to say this is like. Uh, What's the comedian's name? The white guy, the country guy, Lewis. Oh, Lewis. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The guy who just got, got in trouble for uh, masturbating uh, everywhere. Yeah, yeah, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Louis C.K. Yeah, okay. he, he funny though. <laughs> <laughs> he, funny though. <laughs> he, he he did some crazy stuff, but he funny. <laughs> so he did this joke a while back. He's talking about playing hide and seek with 
him and his wife with his like with his four year old, mm-hmm. and he was basically saying like she's horrible at the game because she'll go like hide up against a wall and be visible in plain sight but she thinks she's hiding because she's in her imagination <laughs> right and he's like and i gotta act like an asshole like i can't do like i don't know honey where do you think she is goes to the closet he's like she's not in here uh-huh. he goes looks under the bed i don't she's not here right. where might she be and then eventually he finds her and i think that's a really funny analogy for levels of consciousness because everything's transparent in consciousness but if one or two people are hiding something from each other, Mm. then in their experience, they can be like, wow, I'm really able to hide this information or this emotion. But on a higher level of consciousness, it would be the equivalent of whoever's on the higher level of consciousness, everything's transparent. Right. And so it's like, we can create a hiding experientially, but in consciousness, everything's transparent. Right. And so for us to move into this kind of new humanity and even into these group flow states, like we're having to bring down the walls yeah. and be like more like just open in our con- and, and, and vulnerable in our consciousness for us to be able to then connect on these quote unquote higher dimensions of consciousness and be aware of the information that's traveling th- there mm-hmm. once we once we let go of the veil. So the veil would be like the hiding spot. Right. right? But right. yet to somebody who's conscious they're like i can see you you're right there it's it's like when someone's trying to hide their feelings and you're super empathic and you're like i can see your feelings yeah but you you're like oh you can't see you can't see me but yet to somebody who can see they're like (laughs) right no i i I, I, it's funny you bring this up because i was hanging out with someone last night and he was talking about some powerful spiritual experiences that he he had had or or was relaying someone else's i I forget exactly which but um where the guy would say okay i'm I'm a, I'm observing myself in this meditative state. Okay, who is that observing? Okay, I'm observing, and then he would have like an experience of a snapping out, right? Right. And it, it expanded his experience, and then he would say, okay, now who is it that's observing that? Okay, wow. And then again and again until it like it took him to a place of like all these eyes, like basically just seeing us like nested eyes watching. Yeah. And so that's come up a few times in the last few days in different conversations. And it's, so it's funny that you're, you know, or maybe not funny that you're bringing it up again. Like this thing that, you know, at the end of the day, I, I think of like, I don't know if you're familiar with the book, The Journey of Souls. Uh, I've heard of it. Yeah. yeah, and it's like this this guy who would take people through past life regression, whatever, right, and they would right. die, and then he's like, okay, now what? Well, here's what's happening on the other side, and it's like everyone in your soul pod, your soul family would literally just like tear apart whatever you had or hadn't done. Like it was all on the table. You, the soul fam is right. down now. What about uh, on this day when you were like uh, 23 years old and you did exactly. this thing? And did, it's like none of it's hidden. Like every right. so, thought, every action. You so know. if that if that happens like when we cross over or mm-hmm. when we die, right? Mm-hmm. Um, one of my favorite quotes is the secret to living is to die before you die. Yeah. And realize there is no death. And Eckhart Tolle, so, right? Eckhart Tolle. Yeah, my brother. And so, so if we're like, if this kind of, you know, soul peer review happens when we're on the other side, and we're wanting to experience some of our power that gets unlocked when we cross the other side, but we want to experience it before we die, yeah. then we could be the same way that we're going to be, yep. and we can be that way now. Yep. What I'm saying is, yep. is, is just more open-hearted, more transparent, um, and then we'll start to experience these other dimensions, you yep. know, even You're like pulling in over. your higher self, You're pulling the higher self yep. into this dimension. And I feel like here's another interesting thing. I feel like that's one of the reasons why, uh, and anyone listening to this can see if this is true for them on any level. I've been tracking this for the last few years and I've noticed an, a noticeable change in people experiencing weird, interesting or strange body pains, tension, sickness, disease, things like this when they don't normally experience it. Hmm. So the body's going through this kind of transmutation. I feel like part of it, um, and this recently happened with my with my beloved, she declared something very powerful and pulled this energy of her higher self in a very powerful way into her experience through her intention and through her word. Mm-hmm. And it brought so much light into her being that her identity and her body mind structure it literally like threw her body all out of whack and took her two days to recover wow so i feel like some of the you know the lethargicness you know the the tiredness that people are experiencing in ways that 
you know, they could say, oh, it's my diet. I didn't get enough sleep. And maybe, maybe yes, maybe yes. But I feel like there's been waves of interesting body tensions and tiredness coming in that's directly related to this, these higher frequencies coming in. And it's like our higher selves, the divine is seeking to like inhabit us in form. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That, that's, uh, you know, I shared recently, uh, I think I shared it on the podcast. I sometimes gr- forget what I share, when, where, and how, but having an experience with someone and having a really healing moment and then them, uh, you know, having, uh, getting sick soon yeah. after. And, and then someone basically who, who, you know, Leah, who's like a sort of resident Akashic records reader here. I'd seen her the next day. And she's like, Oh yeah, you and that person actually had past trauma. And when you came together and did this, and had this really powerful healing moment, it cleared up. Right. Space in her that then more light came in, just like you said, and it actually took her body a minute to adjust and it caused her to get nauseous and sick. And, you know, it's like acclimation. And what was funny is my my beloved at the same time had been dealing with some past trauma stuff. And at the, it was like a midnight a midnight where I'm like connecting here at the Mystic Manor. Um, you know, my my partner is at her house and she wakes up at the same time with like energy moving in the same mm. area as the wow. person here and they both get sick simultaneously wow. you know and so it's like, supposedly it's all linked in some way to some past totally trauma. like and that that brings up another interesting kind of thought is that you know the average human lifespan keeps expanding every whatever decade or mm-hmm. 20 years or 30 years or whatever and we can attribute that to a lot of things you know technology better food nutrition education blah 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 i think what's compelling to me is like okay if if this body this this process is happening where we're tuning more into spirit living more by spirit essentially becoming more spirit here in this human form which inevitably is going to significantly reduce tension and stress in our body and our nervous system then how long can it just in theory you know just like like a uh, uh, how long can these bodies actually last mm-hmm. and when, when you factor in this other dynamic of the stress that gets created as a result of resisting the true self. Yeah. And, and, and if we start embracing the true self more, we start pulling all this light frequency, then what does that version of a human body's average lifespan look like? I feel like we get to find out. Yeah. But I, I, who knows? We might easily be able to live to be 150 or 200 years old if we're operating more optimally and less resistant. Some and say more thousands. Spirit. Yeah, I mean, that that's even a logical notion to me you know it makes me think of i had a guy uh i met a while back and he had he had done made ayahuasca himself <laughs> this so the story starts off with like okay dude you're all right and he did a whole lot you know more than he you know intended and and he had a point where he was basically had the option to see a million years in the future and he said what he had what he had sh- was shown was like these two versions of us that we had branched out one is we had really tapped into technology and like ai kind of cyborg right type. and then the others that had really went a re- super spiritual route of oh, with their wow. connectivity and were like bluish in hue and like um and you know yeah so i thought that was a really interesting like um, yeah, what, what what do we actually transform into as we become like, you know, these blue beans? Perhaps who knows if that's the case. But then you think of like Hinduism and like, you know, they're always portrayed blue. blue like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he said he was asked he could keep looking there a million years or he could go a billion years in the future. And so he said he opted to go to a billion years. And he said a lot of what was happening, even at the million years, he couldn't, he was having trouble making sense of the way they were communicating and mm. telepath- telepathically. And, da, da. and he said in a billion years, it was even more abstract. They were like, we were like, I think it was blue again, beans like that were like balls of light that were in like the cosmos and we were interacting with different celestial mm. you know beings and like working with like stars and planets and wow yeah, yeah. that's that's fascinating <laughs> yeah <laughs> so based on that i'm probably ill I'm a, probably at least a billion years ahead of my time. <laughs> right, at least. <laughs> at least. <laughs> oh, man. I guess we'll find out. Well, yeah, we'll or our ancestors out. will find out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or us reincarnated will find out, whatever this happens. Right, right. What do you think about conscious death? Conscious do you think that'll ever ev- become a, a, that's an a inter- phenomenon? That, okay, so that's an interesting point to bring up that so i thinking back to journey of souls i remember they talked about 
you know, there's a point where s- souls are created. They're like, like almost like a nursery for new souls. Uh-huh. Well, if it's a new soul, that implies that, you know, it didn't exist before, which now makes it not eternal. And, and you know, that, right. which is a whole, you know, blows your mind right there. Even and then, okay, hold on, time doesn't exist. And, you know, you start losing your ability to track it. But um, I, I, it kind of makes sense to me that maybe at some point in the journey, you say, all right, I'm just going to re, I'm going to, I'm going to reboot everything. I'm going to, you know, to, to some degree experience a, a death of sorts. Yeah. But then, in another way, you come back out of that in another way, shape, or form, and you know you're back in the, the conscious nursery, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. So I just it, it's interesting. I, I I can see the possibility of that becoming a thing, even if it's not widespread. Mm-hmm. Like you just you're more con. You can just choose. You know, I'm kind of done here, and mm-hmm. it's just time to go. Yep. Or or either by from the reference point of I'm choosing to go, mm-hmm. or you're just like aware of like, mm-hmm. oh, wow, but I'm going today. Yeah. Right. And I, I do think there is at least a few documented cases of yogis that were just like, hey, I'm oh, dying, oh, you're, I'm dying tra- you're saying conscious death conscious is death. leaving this lifetime. I'm thinking of like our consciousness actually oh. like choosing to like reboot itself at some point. No, but to, that's, that's that's interesting a, that's too. That's a whole different thing. No, I was just talking about just like, you know, Having no resistance to death and then just being like, oh, okay, wow, my time's done here. Yeah, I'm going to go I, I think, four o'clock this afternoon, yep. come to my funeral. Like, yeah, if, like, like I told you, you right now, hey, my <laughs> funeral's going to be four I'm o'clock. I'm on my way to my own funeral. <laughs> yeah, well, we're on the way to the funeral. I'm going to die at four and everybody comes, you know. I think that's very possible and would imagine that there's stories of it even happening where people, yeah, you know, I, you look at some of these partnerships, they're like married for 50 years and then the partner dies and then the other one dies within one, hours. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I, I think, I think we'll, we will get to the point where it's like, okay, I'm going to check out, you know, my day's coming. It's time for me to go, you know, I'm yeah. choosing it now. I'll see you. Yeah. Do you ever think, do you think we'll ever like anywhere near collectively, start to look at death differently and not have such a negative negative thing on it? I think so. Well, one, I want to make the de- declarative statement that I am choosing for myself that I get to choose when I get to go. So many, 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 many moons in the future. Uh, yeah. Let's yeah. do it. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Let's yeah, do it. there We're we in. go. All right. We're and in. So it is. <laughs> so it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, and um, what was your next question? You said, you asked me. Do, um, just about the idea of like, Death ever becoming something oh, that's oh, more right. more celebrated or more you can, you know, I think a so. positive thing. I think so. For me, right now, I look, I look, I don't want to go. Yeah, but I'm ex- there's a part of me that's excited. excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I feel like I'm gonna just get you know get to open up the book on like all the things you know. I love stories. Like I want to know every past life story. I want to know, and I think that's what's probably happening a lot on the other side is they're just like observing these hence these eyes that this guy was talking about. He kept right. Seeing. Like it's just like just observing, 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 and then you're like, okay, I'm, I'm. It's fun to watch, but now I want to get in the game. You know, and I want to create and yeah. be, be on the other side of the fence. So, um, yeah, I mean, I have a certain amount of excitement right now about it. Yeah, same so, here. So I, I don't I don't want to leave before my time. I mean, I'm going to since I'm going to choose and all, you know, I'm going to tell you guys I'm not going to choose today. Right. But <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think I think it will get more and more, you know. Obviously, we're we're probably a little ahead of the the curve in our perspective on these things, right? Yeah, um, and we're outside of the the box, and therefore a, a lot less fear surrounding it. But I think it will um, over time. It will become, you know, it, it's like known. Death is life. Life is death. When when you're born to this dimension, you part of you dies That's to where you came from, right? right? When you die here, you're born to to the next, you know, right, right. Next world. So. It's all it's all two sides of the same coin, you know. Yeah, one of my life goals that I've accomplished, and I, I plan on being here for a lot longer. Like I feel like I'm just getting started. Mm-hmm. But one of my life goals that I set out several years ago was it started with I don't want, and it was like I don't want to get to the end of my life in regret, mm-hmm. regret of, or, or with the cliche staying my music still in me, whether my music is unexpressed passions or unexpressed appreciation or unexpressed, uh, anger towards somebody or mm-hmm. unforgiveness. And I was just like, I, if I can help it, um, this is what I said at the time. Cause now I can't help it cause I'm choosing my death. That's right. If I can help it. Then 
I am not going to leave or get to the end of my life and be like, have all of this unexpressed energy. Yeah. You, you know? Yeah. Um, and I can say that I could, one reason I could die in peace if I died today is because it's, I, there's a lot more I want to say and have to say, and it's trying to be happen through me, but I don't have anything significant stored in the chambers of my heart that yeah. is not, hasn't been expressed or <clears throat> being explored, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and that feels like a, one of my that's a spiritual great success, thing to, successes. Yeah, so I was like, wow, I, I, I could, I could die in peace. Yeah. Right. Right. You that's know, I might be like, I am ready to go, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. you know, but I, but I could die in peace. And I feel like that's something that's within anyone's control. You know, I made the decision years ago. I was like, I'm going to just bit by bit. I'm moving anything I, I'm going to wish I had done mm -hmm. at the end of my life. I'm going to prioritize that now, not wait till the end because we don't know. Yeah. Or maybe we do. Yeah. <laughs> we used to not know. We used to not know. Then there was this podcast. Uh, there was podcast and the whole timeline shifted. and <laughs> More control. Yes, please. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. You know, I, what that makes me think of is a story I've shared many times on the show because it was so impactful to me. And there's a, I wish I remembered her name. Um, woman showed up at my house came with another friend of mine and um you know they were just hanging out that day and and she ended up at my house and she ended up telling me this story of her near-death experience where she was swimming and she couldn't make it to shore and she started going under and she like surrendered like i'm done i can't make it any further and she went under and then the next thing she knows she was on the other side mm. and you know some somebody was there a voice whatever and and was like the first thing was like, well, welcome back. You're here. You know, you did everything you wanted to do, right? You went for it, right? right. <laughs> you, you know, you didn't like play it safe and you know not pursue all your dreams, right? You know, in a very prodding way. Mm. And of course, she hadn't. Yeah. And um, so then, you know, her answer was like, well, no, I hadn't. You know, and then boom, she's back in her body. Something was lifting her to the top of the water, supposedly, oh, and wow. she was able to continue swimming and get get back so um yeah I, I think that's a super i mean to me that's sort of the the ultimate gauge of success in life what you're saying you've accomplished like you yeah. know like i could i i've went for it i've done the things i've i've you know not played it safe i've you know believed in in magic i've believed i can create and and have the things that i want and and yeah seen the it, results of that yeah all yeah yeah so you have some great stories. Um, I do. What, what was? Which one have you heard already? So okay, you shared. Already. You shared the the popcorn story on. on popcorn op, he was story. on Optimistic, a forthcoming episode of Optimistic, uh, where you shared the popcorn story, and then after we stopped taping, you told me about the plane. I uh, shared the plane story. Yeah, okay, yeah. got yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, that's just me. That's though. The listeners are, you know, the listeners. Are I mean, I, I've got, I got more stories. Yeah, yeah. and you know what? I might even. I liked your story so much. I might even have shared it on the podcast after we taped Optimistic. I can't recall. I think mm. I did. Now that I think about it. Mm. So any any of those other than those two, then would probably be the safest bet. Okay, so here's a story, or it's three stories in one. Oh, and. What I, there's different things that I personally like about each story, right? It brings up different things. There's different points of expansion in them for me personally. And what I like about this story is I remember years ago when The Secret came out, I was speaking about law of attraction at this, uh, at this establishment. And someone said to me, you know, we're talking about law of attraction. And then someone said to me something like, yeah, but it's not like, you know, it's just going to fall out of the sky. It's not going to just go like it's just going to show up I and mean, you have to do something mm -hmm. in order for it to happen. And I loved that challenge because it's one of those subtleties. There's there's a, it's very intricate because on one hand, you could say. Uh, yes, but on the other hand, it's like, no, stuff does mm -hmm. kind of just happen mm -hmm. like a lot in my world. So I'm like, that's not true that you have to. I think what's maybe more accurate is that when you're plugged in to inspiration, when you're tuned into source and you're tuned into purpose, you're naturally going to be moved unless you're stopping the momentum. Yeah. So so action in that sense is a natural expression of inspiration and alignment yeah so there's that right but i right when the person said that i immediately thought of like this three-in-one story where i was like no this actually just came to me all right and so here it is 
when I moved to California, I used to live in Texas and I drove my car to Florida. I told my mom, I said, once I move, I'm going to give you my car. And so I drove the car to Florida for the holidays and then I was off to move to California. I made the decision. <clears throat> That's a whole other set of stories there. And so I said, I'm going to give you my car. And she's like, oh, but when you get to California, you won't have a car. You kind of need a car in California. I was like, no, I'm just guided to give it to you. So it's all good. I gave her the car. I was in California and maybe about a month in, I went to meet up with a guy that I, I had met on my previous visit to California. And he was like, dude, you're living here now. Get out of here. What, like, where are you? And I said, like, oh, I'm in Ventura right now. I'm going to be moving to L.A. He's like, and how are you getting around? And I said, oh, I just borrowed a friend's car for right now, but I'll, I'll, I'll figure that out. And he says to me, um, he's like, you know, actually, I, ha I have a car. I just got a new car and I was trying to sell my old car on Craigslist. Hold on. Bookmark. Back back up for a mm -hmm, second. Mm -hmm. When I was leaving Florida, I started thinking about getting a new car when my mom said that to me. And I was like, oh, well, what kind of car would I want to get? And I was like, oh, maybe a sports car. I don't really drive fast, but I like the sensation of like yeah. acceleration. Right. And then I was like, oh, a Beamer. Mm. Uh, that, that could be really dope. And I think I even drove by a BMW dealership. But I spent maybe an hour thinking about that, went to a dealership, looked at a car, and then I forgot about it. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'll just get a car whenever. Anyway, so now fast forward, I'm in California. I meet up with this guy. He asked me, how am I getting around? And I said, I don't have a car yet, but <clears throat> everything just seems to be working out for me. He's like, of course. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you know what? That time we spent together, I think he was so appreciative because I stayed in a house kind of like this one for like a week. Mm -hmm. And I was just like naturally serving him just... Mm -hmm by being in the environment he says to me you know i tried to sell my old car on craigslist and i wasn't getting the money i wanted for it um he's like you know what you can have it wow <laughs> and it was a black bmw oh, which is exactly oh what i God. said was the next car i was like wow. oh maybe i'll get a bmw and i was like oh what color would i get i was like oh maybe black that yeah. feels like the season yeah it was a black bmw he gives me the car wow that, that, that doesn't happen to, I mean, my friend gave me like, uh, like a kombucha the other day. Right. <laughs> he gave me, uh, gave me a BMW. So now check this out. It says three stories in one, same theme. So now I'm driving the BMW for the whole year. I go to Florida every year for Christmas near the latter half of the year. Um, we were, me and my girlfriend were living in a neighborhood and we weren't really driving. And so we got bikes which the whole bike thing was a whole other manifestation story manifested out of thin air, two bikes. Anyway, so now we're riding these bikes, we have the BMW, and his son's car, uh, his son got into an accident and didn't have a car, and so I gifted the BMW back to his son, Oh wow! recycled it, so now I don't have a car again. I go home for the holidays again to Florida, and now I'm in Florida. I spent about a month there. And near the tail end of that, me and my girlfriend decided to move from the neighborhood that we were biking around in. And so I was like, oh, probably be good to get a car again. I just gave the BMW away. Check this out. <laughs> so one day I'm walking through my mom's parking lot. I walk past a Jaguar XJ or XJS or something like that. I'd never been attracted to Jaguars before, but on this day, I was walking past and I stopped, I looked inside, I looked at the interior, the leather, the wood grain dash, and I was like, wow, this is amazing. I said, I wouldn't mind having one of these. That was it. That was like about 20 seconds, and I just walked on with a smile on my face. Again, I wasn't car shopping. I just said, man, I'd love to have one of these. That's interesting. Yeah, that would be dope. Next morning, my mom knocks on my room door <laughs> in the morning. She's like, oh, hey, I just got off the phone with your auntie. And she said to tell you hello. I was like, oh, nice. She's telling me. And she said, oh, yeah. And by the way, she mentioned to me that uh, she was trying to sell her old car. <laughs> Jaguar. <laughs> because she got a new car. And at this point, I'm like, and she's like, and then I told her Oren might need a car. But my mom didn't know if I, because she knew I gave the BMW back. <clears throat> Long story short, at this point, I'm just like, no way, no way. And, but that was like, oh, get out of here, wait for it, wait for it. And I was like, what kind of car is it? And she said, a Jaguar. It was the same freaking car wow. that I saw in Florida. I call my aunt, 10 minute conversation. She's like, you know what, your family, I'd love for somebody to, to have this car that will appreciate it. Fly to Houston, get it. And that's that, this, that. Flew to Houston, got the Jaguar XJR, the same car that I walked past wow. and was like, that would be nice to have one of these. Uh, wow. So it does happen like Incredible. that sometimes. Incredible. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's beautiful. I mean, and what I love is like, you know, the car is given to you, then you give the car away. It's like it's a whole different flow than what you normally think of right. happening with a car. You know, it's like it's like all of this stuff, you know, it, it's like I saw a quote from Abraham the other day, and, and I've seen it before, and it stuck out to me. It's like whether you're asking for $10 or $10 million, it's the same thing. It's the same energy. It's like we're just used to playing with certain tools in a certain way. You know, a car is a big thing that has to only come through this very serious exchange and interaction and lots of resources. And, you know, and it's like not necessarily so. Sometimes it falls out of the sky and lands in your lap. It does happen (laughs) like that sometimes. And being tuned into that stream of abundance, that's another thing that I really – you know, was learning on a, on a, on a really deep level back then and still continue to go deeper. It's just, it's this idea of not, you know, not being attached to the fruit, but rather like value the the seed more than the fruit or Mm. the soil more than the fruit Mm. or the genie itself more than the wishes. And I think Mm. that, you know, it's a metaphor for like, okay, there's the things in the external world that we put a value on, yes, and it has a kind of, it has its own value, and so these are the things that we want, but if we really value the actual source... The genie is the, the magic. Genie, that, the genie yeah. is where the magic yeah, 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 yeah. is. So to me, that's, that's those experiences at that time in my life really, really ingrained that in me. I was like, okay, I really value the car, but what is it that... What, what's the actual source? Yeah. You know, and I'm like, I'm, I am that source. I'm tuned into that source. Yep. And that's why I could just give the car away, yep. you know? So e- even though I'm like, you know, it, it's an expensive car, but, but still it's like, it's not the source. It's an, it's a manifestation from the source. And yep. I'd, I'd rather be plugged into the source than have a hundred BMWs. Yep. Yeah, because then you're the genie. Yep. You know what I mean? It's right. like, you want three wishes or you want to be the genie? <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm totally. like, I like, be the genie. That is the that is such a powerful realization, and it's something that has served me so well. Is like you know having had some like it, crazy experience in business that you know most of you guys out there listening have probably heard if if you've been listening for any length of time. Where you know like a, a company from me to you know hundred plus employees and losing it all and uh, that whole journey and what it taught me is like you know what I, I'm the genie. It's gonna it. I don't need to like worry so much about that loss because there's a hundred more of that behind it. Like it's, uh, you know, we are that, that source. And when you, you're coming from that, that position of, of strength and empowerment, it feels really, really good because it's like, I can't lose. You could take everything away from me and I'm going to feel just as valuable as I am right now, knowing like all what I had flowed through my, Ex- you know, connection ex- to source to begin with. Exactly, and I and I, I feel like that's what people are seeking, whether they're whether they know it or not. Yeah. Even if they put the power into something else, what they're really seeking is that that feeling or that knowing. But when you put it inside of something that's you know temporal, yep. then you're then you never really get in touch with the power. But yeah. if you actually know that somehow some way like you are the channel through which it's being created if you know that yep. then to me that's a more mm, practical way of being detached you yep. know this whole idea of detachment yep. it is a powerful manifestation principle but it's i think it's hard for people to get in touch with that because you mean you want me to act like i don't Yep. Right. Want the thing that I want? It's right. like no, 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 no. It's don't be attached. Healthy, our, a healthy sense of detachment. Yeah, and so I think that a healthy sense of detachment. I don't think for me, being detached has come more as a result of realizing I'm the creator than it has from me trying to be detached. Yep. And acting like I don't yep, right. love or care about the things that I right, want. Right. 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 It's just like right. okay, so I'm not afraid to lose it, but that's because I know I'm the creator. So it's yep. like uh, okay, I'll. We'll create more. Let's just yeah. create it again. Even better. Even better, right? So but wait, but wait, there's more. But wait. <laughs> wait, there's more. So you guys can see why I wanted to pull this guy into today's co-host session or in your epic, man. Yeah, likewise. So this fun. was fun. So fun to just free flow with you. Yeah. The master of flow. Check out episode 777 uh, if you want to get a deeper dive from, you know, our previous, you know, longer longer discussion a year and a half or so ago and then for for folks that want to you know follow you uh what's the best place instagram uh yeah instagram at oren harris o-r-e-n-h-a-r-i-s 
Uh, I post quite a bit on Instagram. I'm also on Facebook at Oren Harris, and my website is orenharris.com. Bam. And if you guys want to come and uh, hang out with Oren in person, I tell you what, if, uh, if you want to come out and, and spend a week at the Mystic Manor and you say, the reason I'm there is because I heard Oren and that put me <laughs> over the edge, I will definitely manifest him falling out of the sky into the Mystic Manor for at least some, some length of time, one of the days while you're here. And uh, I'd love to chat with you about uh, coming out and experiencing all the, all the magic that's co-created here. You can set up a call to talk with me at calendly.com forward slash talk with Brandon, or you can also and or go to optimistic.tv and see some videos there and everything about that stuff um yeah this place is epic it is epic i mean it's yeah, i good. have high standards too i don't just say that because it's like well you, people like friend. you are yeah. making it epic it truly is like i was i feel so blessed to have steward like the birth of the container but really as you know with all of the stuff it's like we were talking about even with creating you know flow collaboration it's like you create the container and then like okay let's see what i think that's what source does too it's like okay i'm gonna see this right this, right this, life but i'm not going to completely control let's see what it does Let's see what happens see what happens and if the intention is pure and magical like it is here it's like a lot of good stuff sprouts up so yes sir never know what'll fall from the sky around here yeah this this (laughs) fell from the sky (laughs) did yeah exactly (laughs) you have a song you want to leave uh leave these guys with that you suggested and uh yes it's a beautiful song i just heard well i didn't even hear the whole thing but the part i heard i loved so yes let's, let's cue it up let's cue it up so this is by alexia Chellen, C H E L L U N. And the name of the song is The Power Is Here Now. And it's talking about the power of now and the power of love. Bam. And that being where the magic's at. So, with that being said, enjoy this beautiful track. Until next time, love you all so, so much. Journey well, my friends. Peace. And if you're feeling the call to come for a week, retreat-style, mystic manner immersion, remember to go now and book your time to speak with me directly about stepping into the optimistic vortex at calendly.com forward slash talk with Brandon while there are still spots left. Otherwise, I look forward to co-creating magic with you at the mystic manor. Magic on us, the power of 
power of love is here now. The power of now is here now. The power of you, me, is here to create magic on us. Take care of you, nurture you. 